Well, I've kind of brushed something under the rug. You might have been screaming at me the whole time about it, but uh, it's it's time to address it. It's time for me to come out from under the rug. And the problem is this number right here. Uh, 500, if we're running at 60 frames a second, then 500 divided by 60, 500 divided by 60, 8.33. We can only play a game for 8.33 seconds. And then our assertion, we added an, we added an assertion here, I believe. We say new frame. Oh, no, we didn't. No, we didn't. Assert frame index. Oh, yeah, we added the assertion right here. Oh, you know what? This assertion, this assertion would probably be better. It would probably be better right here. Okay, when you call new frame, we're going to move on with the frame, and then we'll assert that, hey, you got more frames to go. But, uh... That's that's not going to work out. I, I need to be able to play longer than 8.3 seconds. And if I'm worried about this assertion being hit in 8 seconds, that's kind of like riding a bull in a rodeo. It's just, you got 8 seconds, figure it out. You know, debug in 8 seconds, and, and I need more time than that. So so let's 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 do the intelligent thing. Let's uh, bump this up to some insane number that we know we will never hit. Well, <laughs> there's a problem with that. We use this number right here, and remember, this is uh, th this makes up our class def declaration. Okay, so when I instantiate a profiler, uh, all of a sudden this profiler—it's huge object, and chances are you just don't have that much RAM sitting in your box, and you pro you definitely don't have it sitting in your console. So I just can't increase that number. All right, that's that's kind of ignorant. So, what's a what's another solution? What's another thing we could do? Well, pause the video and think about it. I'm gonna pause it and think about it. Okay, I'm not quite sure why I paused it and thought about it because I know what I'm going to do. But uh, let's go here. Let's grab blue and go thinner. Let's let's take this number 500 and let's just assume we have. It makes this array here of frame samples. Okay, and, and just pretend this is 500 frames. And I'm feeling lazy. I don't want to go that far. So pretend that all I have out here, this is 500 frames, right? And we're simply just going frame, frame, frame. And every frame we're recording our samples, you know, frame, 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 frame. We can have up to 20 samples per frame, which hopefully that would be enough. I can come bump that number and feel okay about it. But the frames are the things, man, I'm, ideally I'm getting 30 to 60 of these per second. And I'm going to run out of room real quick. And what should we do? Well, I'll tell you what we do. If I'm profiling, chances are... If I get some hiccups, if I get some hang-ups, and I see it, I can immediately close my game. I can do it within eight seconds. All right. And if I want more than eight seconds, I can probably safely bump this to a thousand and get sixteen seconds, or whatever our FPS is. But the idea is, when I'm profiling, I want to I want to see what I just barely did not too long ago. All right. That's what I'm trying to pinpoint and debug at this point. Now we could modify our profiler to constantly write out the profile file and it, our profile file will get really long and we won't have all that code written in the shutdown function but then we need to worry about buffering so the profiler doesn't get too much in the way of gameplay that sort of thing I'm just trying to start out simple here right? I just want to keep track of the last few seconds and if you've been playing 10 minutes that's fine if you see a little hiccup or hang up uh, maybe you have a frame spike a frame takes 5 seconds to run or whatever then uh then close the game down and look at the profiles. They're good for 16 seconds now. So the way we're going to do that is simply by reusing this array here. Wait here, what if I took this array and I, I bent it, right? I'm going to, like like a crowbar or something, I'm going to muscle man this thing and I'm going to bend it in to each other. And, and so I kind of get something that more looks like this. All right? And uh, there's actually a computer science term for it. It's called a circular array. Now, in reality, it's still just a contiguous sequence of bytes, but when I get to the end, I'm just going to jump back and go right here. And so it's, it's like a snake chasing its, or a dog, a dog chasing its tail, probably a better analogy, a dog chasing its tail. And we know that this thing is 16 seconds long because I roughly define that some of the many, how many frame samples we're going to have. So we, we're, we're going to turn our profiler 
to be a circular data structure. Ooh, that's very computer science-y, isn't it? But it's, it's basically going to be a circular array. Now, I think the simplest thing would be to go download a circular array. I was looking in the boost library. I noticed that the boost library added a circular array, but um, I just don't want to download and use the boost library quite yet, unless I know I absolutely need to. Now, this is the second time boost has provided something that I probably should have used, but but uh, I think it's also educational from a computer science point of view to do this circular thing, and it's really not that hard. So we're going to have the profiler do it for us. And if it turns out we need another circular data structure later, well then I'll have a unit test and I can extract and refactor and and then make a circular array or pull in the boost library if necessary, that sort of thing. So anyway, maybe the right call, maybe not. It's where I'm going, and uh, you're going to come with me if you stick st stick with it. Okay, so that's what we're going to do over the next few videos, and we need to write unit tests first to verify that this is what we got.